Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here, and we are back doing a Rivals of Ixalan Intermediate Swiss Draft League. Oh, uh, let's see, I think the pick here is the Mistbinder. The Lord effect is very strong. It's a two-drop as well. Otherwise, we could take Reaver Ambush, and I think those are the only two cards I'm really considering here. Um, first few picks of a draft, I'm pretty cool with just taking the strongest card, figuring things out. There's really no rush to force uh, an archetype in this format since I think it's pretty rare. I don't even know if there's, yeah, I, I can't even remember one draft where I've actually like been short on playables. So pretty unlikely that happens. So it's pretty safe to just take really strong cards for a while and see which ones pan out. All right, follow-up pick. So we don't have a good merfolk here. The best card is the Brawler or the Sky Marcher. Probably the Sky Marcher. This card's really good. I like the Brawler a lot too, actually. But Sky Mart, the Life Link and the Flying. I mean, even weaker than Vampire Nighthawk, and I still like it. Otherwise, we take a Hunt the Week, which is fine. Follow up to Mistbinder. Um, the problem is merfolk tend to not really i mean i could just take it it is a bit uh concerning that there's no merfolk in here but i was gonna say merfolk tend to not have great bodies for fight cards but the fact that this one buffs it's probably okay so i guess we take it i think the sky marcher is better but they might be close enough where it's not a big deal here on the other hand captain's hook is just crazy good i really like this card Really strong card. Equipped for one is just insane. And I'm taking it over a Miscloaked Herald, which I'd really like to. And even a Strength of the Pack is good in Merfolk, but this card is really good. I'm actually very surprised to see it. Third pick, even. It's a pretty easy first pick, I think, most of the time. Okay, Pioneer is fantastic, so I'm fine taking that over a Hunt the Week. Could get more removal, but Pioneer has just proven itself to be an excellent card in this format, so I'm going to definitely take it here. Really good with Captain's Hook as well. All right, here, could just take the Woodland Stream, but actually we'll take Expel. You can definitely get Ascend pretty easily in Merfolk, and putting it on, like, doing the tempo play, putting it on top of their library is pretty nuts, so we'll take it over a Woodland Stream. Here, I suppose we just take the Stalker. Certainly a playable Merfolk. Otherwise, other good cards in here. Recover, Buccaneer. I like the Raptor. Everything else is pretty whatever. The Hatchling is fine. I kind of like Guilt Grove Stalker with Captain's Hook. That's almost like borderline unblockable. Can't be blocked by creatures of power two or less, or... And then it also requires that they block with two or more. That's pretty cool. I kind of like that. Uh, here we just take the Artisan. It's a good merfolk in general. I've I've been I'm more impressed with this card than I was at the beginning of the format. Um, probably just because it's got a 3-3 body, which is totally a relevant body in this format. Otherwise, there's Spirewinder and Sworn Guardian and a Plummet, all of which are fine, but we're going to take merfolk. So here we can take Negate for sideboard, or Highland Lake if I want to splash a red card. Uh, Negate is a sideboard card anyway. It's actually, it's a decent sideboard card, but I'm going to take the Highland Lake. It's early enough where we could definitely splash something in red. All right, here it's an easy plummet. Really excellent sideboard card, so... Let's see what's in here late. Dust Charger is very good. Deathspitter and Companion are both playable. I'm just looking at which colors are flowing late. We're not seeing green or blue, which is a bit, well, I mean, I guess we got the plummet, but um, I guess we'll take the urge. Totally playable. Never super exciting, but if you can get the two for one, you're pretty happy. Armasar is actually decent, but usually when I play tribal, I want to stick to my tribe. Uh, hmm. That's a late Aspirant. Uh, we're going to take the Sanctuary. Not that we really need it, but we don't need the other cards either. So late red cards flowing. I guess I'll take a Harness. 
Red and black flowing. Hmm. I'm not t second to last pick recover. Might need to take that. That's uh, not being able to play Mistbinder might be a problem, but I guess we could theoretically play Bug. Hmm. I mean, green allows you to definitely splash the easiest of all the colors. Another thing is we could just pick up blue out of our pack two. Typically, if you're getting cut from a color in pack one, your pack two is an opportunity to supplement where necessary. But yeah, second to last pick recover is pretty odd. Wow. Profane Procession. This is the card I forgot about. Yeah, this is the unfair. <laughs> this is another one of those unfair rares. This should have been a mythic. Tetsamok should have been a mythic. And the uh, Tender Shoot Dryad. If those three had been mythic, I, I really think it would have pretty dramatically altered this format. Um, so I'm definitely taking Profane Procession. I think we might have a little bit of problem playing it, but if black was as open, hmm. I don't know. I mean, otherwise, what would I even take? Like a Crashing Tide? <laughs> That's much worse than a Profane Procession. All right. So we might have to rebuild the deck here, but we'll see. I, I probably can do Junk pretty easily. Green seemed open enough. Blue definitely didn't seem open. So I guess, geez, Trap Draw Tyrant? Okay. Foil, no less? <laughs> Is that worth something? I mean, typically foil mythics, regardless of what they are, are worth something. Uh, that's worth 14 tickets. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, wow. Someone just really accidentally must have passed that. That is crazy. All right, Trap Jaw Tyrant it is. All right, here we have Moment of Craving, which seems like a good pickup. Otherwise, there's Temple Altasar, but I like the Moment of Craving. There's also a Forerunner, which is good, but we're going to get some removal. I think we're moving into Junk and maybe just straight black-white non-vampire. Jeez, that would be weird. But regardless, we can pretty easily take a... at least take a black card here and figure things out from there. Okay, so we can take the Luminous Bond. Pretty excellent pickup. More hard removal. Another 400 of the Heralds in here, but I'm just going to take the removal. At this point, we've got some cool, kind of unfair things going for us, so I like it. So we could take the Helioptorus if we thought we were going to get more dinosaurs, which is possible because both green and white are going to have them. Otherwise, there's Hardy Veteran, which really isn't that great for us because... It's a better offensive card. I mean, granted, it's a bear at worst, which is fine. But, I mean, we could even theoretically move out of green. It's still early enough in this draft, especially if we're getting all these powerhouse cards. I mean, granted, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because our pack one was pretty much nothing then. But, like, I can just take Helioptorus here and be okay with it. Otherwise, I'm taking, like, a Moment of Triumph or a Hardy Veteran. I'm going to take the Helioptorus. Helioptorus? Healy, Heli, I don't know what it is. Squire's Devotion, Luminous Bond, Dinosaur Hunter, all good. I think we're going Bonds. We're going to try to just play removal that deck here. Alright, so the problem with Vona's Hunger is it does not pair well with Luminous Bond. So I think we take the Pterodon, which has impressed me. Uh, like I said, this card is cool in theory, but when you're playing Luminous Bonds on your opponent's creature, it's kind of a big nombo. It's like, okay, I'll just get rid of this creature that's not doing anything anyway. Whereas Suncrested Pterodon has actually proven itself to be a pretty excellent card, so we're going to take that over the Revenant. Alright, we can take more Fixing, but I think I might take another Pterodon. Let's just, let's just say I cut all this from my deck. How are we looking, playable-wise? This is pack two. Not going to lie. I mean, we need some playables pretty hard. It's a good chance that we're going to have to play some green. 
But what we do have is very good. I'm going to take the Pterodon. Dusk Charger, yet another good pickup. Kind of getting there with just good black and white non-vampire cards. Like here I could just take the Paladin and be perfectly fine with that. Do we have life gain? No, but a 2-mana three, 3-3 three blocker is fine. Otherwise, we could take the Moment of Triumph, but I'm going to take the, the Paladin. I kind of feel like if we really want to make this work, we're... Ooh. All right, I'll take the Temple Altasar now. Uh, if we really want to make this deck work... Oops, take the Revenant. We're going to need as many playables as we can get. So we can take the Glorifier, and now we have one, two, only two Vampires. I still like Glorifier, and we're in the Vampire colors, so I think we just take it. Someone can have that. Okay, so we shifted gears pretty hard, but look at our count here. We're actually... <laughs> Whatley, what are you doing? Okay. I'm going to take it. Wait. What's that's I looked at the wrong one. What's this one worth? Forgot that there's multiple already. It's only worth about a ticket. It's a good card though. Just spit out dinosaurs all day. I'm gonna take it. We're gonna try and <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna try and get it in here. Otherwise Dark Nourishment or Pious Interdiction, both of which would be fine, but alright. We're we're going deep. We're going ultra insane. Insane mode here. Glacial Fortress, okay. Uh, Dark Nourishment. Let's see what the Glacial Fortress is worth. I mean, at this point, why not just... Let's just jam. <laughs> I doubt it's worth that much. Yeah, it's only worth a ticket. All right, we'll take the Dark Nourishment. We actually do need playables. Seems like we can play 17 lands, though, since we have a lot of five drops and we have the Watley. Probably wheel that... Uh... <sighs> Regis Alpha, too. This card is so good. This card is very strong. deck does, just really does not need another 5 drop uh, fixing is definitely an issue card is really good I'm going to take the soldier I think we need playables we have 9 creatures in this deck yeah Ferocidon's cool uh, interloper seems good Better than another 5-drop in Sunrise Seeker, so okay. You gotta be kidding me. Another Regisar Alpha? Wow. Someone is getting the hookup. I might just take Skullduggery here. I like it more than Slasher Talons. Desperate Castaways is a creature, which I want, but... It's not very good in our deck. It's just a, just a blocker. Whereas Skullduggery is very good. Jeez. Someone is really getting the hookup. It's funny that I'm saying that when our deck has just got broken cards in it, like Profane Procession. So, I mean, granted, they are getting hooked up, but I would say we are too, with 15 ticket cards in a deck that's got one of the broken rares. Hmm. This is an actual bit of a mess. Do I need to play a Gilded Sentinel? I might have to. We'll see. First Conquistador? Doesn't seem great. It is a vampire, but it's our only... I don't really want to play a Grey Ogre. Guess we could take the Blight Keeper. It flies. Okay. It's good with Captain's Hook. Deadeye Plunderer off of a... Nothing? Alright, I'll take the Dreadnought. Not the sexiest looking curve I've ever seen. Might need to play this prying blade if I really want to make a Whatley work. Otherwise, I take another Blight Keeper. Alright, I'm going to take the prying blade and hope. I think Dreadnought's gone. We just don't have enough creatures to support that. And I think the last thing this deck needs is. Alright, Tormentor's good on the other hand. Last thing this deck needs is more uh, five drops that you can't even do anything with. Um, I guess canopy. It 
this is some deck. Okay. Hmm. Take a dual shot. All the dual shots. Pretty good with Trap Jaw Tyrant. On the splash, however, not a huge fan. So we don't have to splash for Whatley, but if I'm playing Prying Blade, I probably need to play the Whatley. The problem is we don't have much creatures, nor do we have much evasion. We basically have a Blight Keeper. Heliopter, that's two, three, four, five. Well, maybe it's enough. All right. We're crazy enough. We'll make it work. We really can't cut creature, though, unfortunately. Although, Whatley kind of counts as a creature. I might be willing to play 14, and I really don't want to play Gilded Sentinel. <laughs> I would really prefer to not play Gilded Sentinel, if at all possible. All right, let's get this out. Like I said, it's 14 creatures, technically, with Whatley. And I guess Profane Procession's kind of half a creature, too, right? Eventual creature. Um, yeah, this is some deck. I am... I am at a loss here. The old, the classic start your curve at three. Yeah, this, without the board wipes, this deck could have some problems. Although, I mean, it's got some super powered stuff in it. So, maybe I'm just, let's be hopeful that we can make this come together. All right, well... This is what we got, and I guess this is how we're running it. So I guess, uh, well, the Sanctuary actually kind of helps. Because we're not super color intensive either, we might even try the two red sources, two mountains. I know that seems crazy, but because we got this this Forsaken, uh, Forsaken Sanctuary rather, actually helps quite a bit. Because now we have eight black, eight white, which is totally good to run this, plus two, maybe two and a half sources if you count the Prying Blade to play Watley. So, okay. All in all, uh, I don't, yeah, I mean, this deck looks more like another one of my fun decks, but it does have a broken card in it in Profane Procession, so that helps a lot. So, I, yeah, I guess we'll have to see what this deck can do. It looks like fun, at the very least. So, let's run it like this, and we'll see you round one.